Let's talk anticipated romance releases. Hey, what's up? My name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. I love to do anticipated releases videos and talk about the books that are coming out in the coming months. So for today, I'm going to be taking you through all of the romances that are coming out in January through June, so the first half of 2022. Obviously, this is a little bit late, but I wanted to release it around Valentine's Day. Um, and as the weather gets warmer, because I know when it gets warmer, all I want to read is rom-coms on the beach. So this video is specifically going to be focusing on traditionally published romances only because the indie romance genre which I tend to read a lot in you really only hear about new releases maybe like a month or two in advance so it's really hard to make like a six month long term release video but I do usually like post about them on my Instagram when I hear about them so follow me there to stay along on the journey so two things that I want to mention real quick before we start. First of all, I am now officially a Hello Lovely Box rep. I'm so excited. I've loved the brand for a really long time and I've always browsed on their website. I have a few of their pieces, but now I get to officially rep them and it's so exciting. They're a bookish merch brand that really focuses on the romance genre, so perfect for me to announce it in this video. And you can use my code Katie15 to get 15% off of your order. And you'll see me posting a lot about the stuff that they have on my Instagram. Very excited for this opportunity. The next thing I want to mention is that I have been sent some more stuff from Dossier. Dossier is a small France-based company that basically brings you designer perfumes for an affordable price. And so this time I had them surprise me with some scents. So last time I picked out what the ones that I want. So you can kind of almost go on there and look for the scents. They usually name them like by what it smells like, but on the, the website, it will tell you like what brand perfume it's the closest to. I have just been like getting into perfumes and so these are so fun. So I work with the rep and I just like said, surprise me, send me your favorites. So this one is Ambry Saffron, which has top notes of saffron, orange blossom, middle notes of jasmine, plum, cedarwood, and base notes of oak moss, fir, balsam, and amber, which just all sounds good. Um, and this one is inspired by Mason Francis Cardesian Barcot Rogue 450 UD perfume. Do I know what that is? No, but it smells really good. <laughs> this next one that I was sent was a floral marshmallow. So when I opened it, I was like, am I gonna like that? And then I actually do like it. <laughs> Top notes of marshmallow, neroli, bergamot, font, middle notes of orange blossom, honeysuckle, jasmine, and orris, and base notes of amber, vanilla, and mm. And I will have a discount code down below in the description so that you can get a discount off of your first order with them. All right, so here's the deal. There are so many romances, so many romances. So what I'm gonna do is I'm really just gonna give the quick pitch line for each one. I know usually sometimes I do give long-winded descriptions of books, but today we're just gonna be quick and to the point and really just read like the tagline. Otherwise this video will be two hours long. And as much as you may like watching me, I don't know if you would like to watch me for two hours. You might have better things to do. So let's get into it. First, I'm gonna start with January with some books that have already been released. First up, we have Electric Idol by Katie Robert. Already loved, read it and loved it. This is a modern day Psych and Eros retelling set in the ultra modern Olympus city. Basically, Eros is sent to kill Psyche, but she was nice to him once, so he decides to marry her instead. Next is Weather Girl by Rachel Lynn Solomon, and this is one I read already as well. This is about a weather girl who teams up with the sportscaster reporter at her news station in order to get their divorce bosses back together to make their lives easier, but they may fall in love in the process. Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. This is the newest Colleen Hoover. I have not become a coho girly yet, but I feel like when I read her, I will. You know what I mean? So her newest one is about a struggling single mom who goes back to her hometown and bonds with the local bar owner. Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. This was like the rom-com pick of the month for Book of the Month, which was also really awesome to see. This is about the first openly non-binary contestant on America's favorite reality cooking show, falls for their clumsy competitor. So set on the reality show, baking involved just sounds like chef's kiss shall we say how to love your neighbor by sophie sullivan so grace has gone to interior design school and she decides to purchase a cute little beach house to fix up however her sexy grumpy neighbor may be getting in the way of things as a real estate developer he is trying to overtake the house that grace is trying to renovate the roughest draft by emily wiberly and austin seguin broca this one sounds like very meta because it is written by a couple and it's about a couple 
but writes. So basically in this book they're co-writers and a couple and they're like topping the literary charts till they hit some plot hole and now they can't resolve their differences. However, they have one final book left on their contract. And so what they must do is they must hole up again in a tiny Florida rental property and finish this last book that they have left together. Something Fabulous by Alexis Hall. It is described as a witty romance about a reserved duke who is betrothed to a twin who is a woman and he is hopelessly enamored with the other twin who is a man. Love at First Spite by Anne E. Collins. So falling in love is the ultimate payback. This is about an interior designer who teams up with an enigmatic architect at her firm in order to get revenge on her ex and the only way she knows how by building a spite house next door to him. Very fun. I feel like there's like a theme of like houses and interior design and I love it. Okay, this one sounds so cute and I'm like mad at myself I haven't fixed it up yet, but we have Digging Up Love by Chandra Bloomberg and it's a debut novel. So basically, Anita is a small town baker and she has dreams of opening her own bakery, but then a dinosaur bone turns up in her grandparents' backyard, which brings paleontologist Quentin Harris to her small town in Illinois to see the discovery for himself. I mean, that just sounds kind of like bonkers and amazing and I'm here for it. Made in Manhattan by Lauren Lyle. It is a reverse My Fair Lady retelling for the modern era about a pampered and privileged Manhattan socialite who must teach an unpolished and denim-loving nobody from the Louisiana Bayou how to fit in with the upper crust of New York City. Oh, love that. Okay, moving on to February, which is the month that we are currently in. First up is Good Girl Complex by L. Kelly. So we follow Mackenzie Mack Cabot, who's a people pleaser and comes from this kind of like rich, uptight town. She wants to grow her internet business, but her parents are like, no, you need to go to college. So she goes to this like small college in this beachside town. And there she meets the bad boy of the town, Cooper Hartley. From there, sparks fly. Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring at Blake. This one just looks so cute. So this is about Delilah Green who basically has moved away from her small town to kind of like get away from her estranged step family and she is following her dreams of being a photographer but her stepsister basically begs her to come back to town and photograph her wedding. And there Delilah Green runs into Claire Sutherland who they have known each other like their whole lives and Claire is a struggling single mother with an unreliable ex. Um, and she really like values her routine and Claire is one of Delilah's stepsister's best friends and from there their romance heats up. Next is Count Your Lucky Stars by Alexandria Bellafleur and this is the third in the Written in Your Stars series which I really need to read this whole series honestly. This is a rom-com about former best friends who might become each other's second chance at love. So Margot doesn't do relationships after a like failed string of relationships. However, when she is out and about with her best friend touring wedding venues, she comes across her first love and best friend, Olivia Grant, and they lock eyes. And now Olivia is planning Margot's best friend's wedding in which she's the best woman in. And so now they are kind of forced to be near each other again after everything fell apart 10 years ago. Not the Witch You Wed by April Asher. It's like a paranormal romance, but it's like got a rom-com cover. So I feel like it's a cross of those two genres. It's a fake relationship between a magicless witch and a wolf shifter because they are forced by arcane supernatural laws to find mates. Very interesting. We got like the, the like, usual paranormal romance tropes and the usual rom-com tropes and just like smash them together. The Rebound by Katherine Wall. So Abby is newly single and so she flies home to her native hometown of this like rural Ireland place and the first guy that she meets when she touches down is Luke who offers to give her a ride home. And she decides that he is the perfect rebound. Next is Ramon and Julieta by by Alana Quintana Alberson. So when fate and tacos bring Ramon and Julieta together on the day of the dead, the star-crossed pair must make a choice, accept the bitter food rivalry that, that drives them apart or surrender to a love that consumes them. So it's like Romeo and Juliet, but like meets tacos. I love it because they are like celebrity chefs and ugh, so fun. A Perfect Equation by Elizabeth Everett. And this is number two in The Secret Scientists of London. This is like more of a historical romance, which I didn't include that many historical romances in this list. I really focused on like contemporary rom-coms, but I really want to read this one, so I put it on here. So this is a historical rom-com about a, a sharp-tongued mathematician woman and an aloof, handsome nobleman, and they have to like work together. I don't know. I just feel like I'm going to be really into this series when I read it because like historical, but like women in STEM, amazing. 
I'm So Not Over You by Ahsoka Jackson. It's been months since Keon has heard from his ex-boyfriend. However, he gets a frantic text from his ex Hudson one day and they meet up in a cafe and Hudson tells Keon that he needs him to pretend to be his boyfriend while his parents are in town. And so they go from being exes to fake boyfriends. Now on to March. This is the much anticipated rom-com follow-up to It Happened One Summer. It's called Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. We follow Hannah, who is Piper's sister, and she is a production assistant on a movie that comes to film in Westport. And so she must stay in Fox's spare bedroom. Fox is on, is a fisherman on Brennan's ship, and he is basically known as like the playboy of Westport. And it's a friends to lovers rom-com. I actually just finished this last night and I adored it with every fiber of my being. If you ask me by Libby Hubshire, a love advice columnist's life goes up in flames when she catches her husband cheating on her and so she decides to burn off his belongings in the front yard and a smoking hot firefighter named Dez shows up to put out the flames. The League of Gentlewoman Witches by India Holton, which is the follow-up to the Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels. So basically there is Charlotte who's the future leader of the League of Gentlewoman Witches and she must hunt after this amulet. However, Alex O'Reilly is a pirate who is also after the amulet. A Brush with Love by Maisie Edding. And this is a dentist romance. So Harper is awaiting a placement in a top oral surgery program and she meets Dan who is a first year dental student with a family legacy to contend with. And it's the romance set to the background of a dentist's office. Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter. This is about a steamy text message from a wrong number, which turns into an anonymous romance. This one sounds like really intriguing and I am very intrigued to read it. Um, and it turns out that like, it's the guy's best friend's little sister that he's accidentally texting. Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma. And it's a rom-com inspired by The Taming of the Shrew. It's a love-phobic TV doctor who must convince a love-obsessed homebody that they are destined to be together. Four Aunties and a Wedding by Jesse Q. Sutano. And this is the follow-up to dial A for aunties. And so I'll give you the summary of the first book, which is what happens when you mix one accidental murder with 2,000 wedding guests and then toss in a possible curse on three generations of an immigrant Chinese Indonesian family, you get four meddling Asian aunties coming to the rescue. Sadie on a Plate by Amanda Elliott. A chef's journey to success leads to discovering the perfect recipe for love in this delicious romantic comedy. And yes, this is a chef TV show rom-com. On to April, which is my birth month, if you didn't know. I love my birthday, so April 26th, mark your calendars. It's actually Tuesday, so there's a lot of books releasing that day. Out of His League by Caroline Richardson. This is about Gretchen, who doesn't expect to meet her favorite baseball player on her way to Vegas for a wine event, um, but she does run into Joshua Malvern, who is being sent down from the major leagues. And they're basically having a fling for that weekend, and we see where things go from there. To Marry and To Metal by Martha Waters, which is the third in the Regency Vow series. I read the previous book, in the series a year ago and I loved it and so now this is about Lady Emily Turner who engages on a marriage of convenience that turns out to be not so convenient and we do get some glimpses of these characters in the previous book and now it is time for their own book which is very exciting. Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. City girl Alexis has her world turned upside down by a man that is 10 years younger than her, Daniel Grant, a ridiculously hot carpenter. The Wedding Crasher by Mia Sousa. So this is about two strangers who get trapped in a lie and have to fake date their way out of it. Um, she crashes the wedding that her cousin is the wedding planner to and basically gets stuck in the situation with the guy and they lie. No Rings Attached by Rachel Lacey. This is number two in the Mrs. Wright series. Leah basically lies to her mother about having a date to her brother's wedding and so her best friend provides her with fun, gorgeous, grace. Grace Poston as a fill-in fake date for the wedding. The Date from Hell by Gwenda Bond. This is number two in the Not Your Average Hot Guy series. Um, I love this cover. <laughs> so I will read you the summary for Not Your Average Hot Guy because I think it's like a continuation. So it's a paranormal romantic comedy at the possible end of the world. Callie is running her family's escape room business for the weekend when a satanic cult shows up and claims that one of the props is like a real spell book. 
and they need it to summon the right hand of the devil. So then the summoning releases a handsome demon named Luke who promises Callie he can help her stop the cult from destroying the world. That just sounds so fun. This book came out like a year ago and I don't know why I never heard about it, but oh, it came out in October. Um, I want to read it because it just seems really fun. Reputation by Lex Croucher. It's a classic rom-com with a Regency era twist, perfect for fans of Mean Girls and Jane Austen. I love that combination. Middle class Georgiana moves to a new town and she basically gets taken under the wing by the rich upper class ladies. That sounds really fun. I would love like Mean Girls set in Regency era, which seems like this is what it is, so very excited. The Romantic Agenda by Claire Kahn. Joy is in love with Malcolm, but Malcolm really likes Summer. Summer is in love with love. And Fox is Summer's ex-boyfriend. Also, the main character Joy is asexual. So I'm really interested to see like these kinds of dynamics play out. Um, the cover is beautiful. I'm very intrigued. Business Not As Usual by Sharon C. Cooper. And a woman learns the hard way about mixing up business with pleasure. And this is about Dreamy, who basically wants to win the lottery and start her own company. And Carter, who comes from like a very wealthy family, um, but instead of like mingling with the upper crust, he uses his time to back start companies. And so they meet each other. On to May. This is the season now where they start to release like a lot of the summer rom-coms for the warmer months and I just love it every year. I think this is like one of the most anticipated rom-coms like of the whole year for everyone and that is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Um, her last two books have basically been smash hits. I have not read any of them yet but I really want to. Um, and this one is about one summer, two rivals, and a plot twist they didn't see coming. And I think that they do both work in the publishing industry. So yes, Nora is a literary agent, and Charlie is a brooding editor. And they like, basically she goes on vacation with her sister, and they bump into each other. But it's not a meet cute, because they've already met many times before, and they do not like each other. Uh, I just like, I haven't even read her books yet, and I feel like I already love her. So I hope I really like her books when I read her. Okay, this one, oh my god, this is probably one of my personal most anticipated books of the whole year. I like have an arc, but I feel like I kind of want to just like wait for the physical copy so I can like hold it in my hands while I read it, you know? Because I know that I'm gonna buy it. And that is A Set on You by Amy Leah. If you don't know, like I'm very into like working out, like I power lifted and competed and stuff. So like, it's very near and dear to my heart. This is about a gym nemesis that pushes a fitness influencer to the max. So we follow Crystal Chen, who is a curvy fitness influencer, which I like love that um, kind of representation in like a fitness rom-com, you know? So she's built her career shattering gym stereotypes and mostly ignoring the trolls. And then we have firefighter Scott Ritchie, who is a smug new gym patron who routinely steals her favorite squat rack. Like if you like power lift or don't you think about that, like the rage that I feel when that happens, like rage, rage. Um, and then they run into each other at their grandparents' engagement party because apparently their grandparents are getting married. So um, very much looking forward to that. Next is the new Christina Lauren romance. Uh, Christina Lauren are very well-known romance authors. It's a uh, author duo. I read their release last year, The Soulmate Equation, and it was really fun. Lily grew up the daughter of a famous treasure hunter, um, however, his legacy did not leave her much money, but now she kind of has her own empire leading tourists around on like fake treasure hunts. Uh, and basically her ex walks back into her life with a bunch of friends ready to hit the trails like with her tour company. And it's like their second chance romance in the wilderness. Starry Eyed by Helena Hunting, and it's number two in her Spark House series. London Spark just broke up with her boyfriend, and so she goes out and has a girls' night with her sister, and this man buys her a drink and gives her his number, and she's like, no thanks. So she runs the family's hotel, and basically she gets this deal with this multi-millionaire CEO, and so they walk in for the meeting, and it's the guy from the bar from all those months ago. Now they have to work together for this deal. And things go from there as they do in rom-coms. Never Been Kissed by Timothy Donofsky. Ren Roland has never been kissed, so he feels nostalgic on the eve of his birthday and basically sends out an email to every boy that he had a crush on before he came out, and one person answers the email, which is Derek Haverford, who is a social media intern at the local drive-in theater, and their romance progresses from there. 
Chef's Kiss by TJ Alexander. So this is a high-strung pastry chef's professional goals are interrupted by an unexpected career transition and the introduction of her wildly attractive non-binary kitchen manager in this deliciously fresh and witty queer rom-com. Lots of cooking books and I kind of love it. Under One Roof by Allie Hazelwood, and this is like the first in her novella series. I do think this one is already out on audiobook, but like the ebook doesn't drop until May. And basically, these are about like rival engineers, and it's a novella, and I want to read it so bad because it's like her steminist series or something like that. I don't know, there's like a series of three of them, and I need them. And then in August, she of course has her new. Rom-com coming out, Love on the Brain, but we're not talking about that today because this is only January through June. The Stand-In by Lily Chu. This is about Gracie Reed, and basically she's living her life when one day this car pulls up, and it's like the famous cinema golden couple, Wei Feng Li and Sam Yao, and basically Feng Li wants Grace to be her stand-in because they look very similar, and so and now Gracie must like take on this movie star persona being the stand-in, and she starts to develop feelings for Sam, but everything between Feng Li and Sam it may not be what it seems. That sounds so fun. Now on to June, which is the last month that I have to talk about, and lots of really good rom-coms coming out that month. Fake It Till You Bake It by Jamie Wesley. Uh, love the title. It's about a reality star and a cupcake baking football player pretend to be a couple in order to save his bakery. I love that. As Seen on TV by Meredith Shore. Emerging journalist Adina Geller is done with dating in New York City um, and she's found a new story which is that this company is trying to target Tiny Pleasant Hollow for development and so she goes to the town and she tries to save it um, and there she meets Finn Adams who works for the real estate company and sparks fly between them even though she's trying to dismantle his company. Okay, American Royalty by Tracy Livesay. I am literally obsessed with this cover and this concept. I really want to read this one. And it's basically like based, it has like Meghan Markle and Prince Harry vibes, essentially. So a prince who wants to live out of the spotlight falls for a daring American rapper who turns his life and the palace upside down. I mean, hello, I want to read this one so badly. It just seems so cool. The Sizzle Paradox by Lily Manon. So this follows a lyric bishop who studies sexual chemistry and like basically the recipe for success in relationships, but she can't figure out her own love life. So basically, Keon Montgomery, her best friend, who is also working on his own thesis, basically decides to tutor lyric on like really good dating tactics. And so like they go on tutoring sessions to like figure out love and academics and it goes from there. Nora goes off script by Annabelle Monaghan. So this is about a divorce romance channel screenwriter whose script about her marriage's collapse might just help her reclaim her life and find love. Stuck With You by Ali Hazelwood. This is the next one in her novella series. It's about STEM and women in STEM and I need it. How to Fake It in Hollywood by Ava Wilder. Really looking forward to this one because the concept seems really cool. It is about a talented Hollywood starlet and a reclusive A-lister who enter into a fake publicity relationship. But they discover that their feelings may be more than just a PR stunt. Ah, oh, that sounds so fun. And the cover is beautiful. Wicked Beauty by Katie Robert. This one is about Helen, Patroclus, and Achilles. In her Dark Olympus series, I love it, I'm here for it, I'm going to be reading every book in her Dark Olympus series, and I plan to read like literally every one of her books eventually. On Rotation by Shirlene Obuobi, and this is about Angie Appia, who is the epitome of a perfect immigrant daughter. She has everything, a handsome boyfriend, um, ride or die friend, she's in medical school, so then everything falls apart, her boyfriend stumps her, um, she bombs her exams and her roommate basically like tells her that she's a bad friend. So she begins to question everything, like her career choice um, and her friendships, but then enter Ricky, who is brilliant, thoughtful, and sexy, but who has a waist man practically tattooed across his forehead. And she has always wanted control, but there's one thing that she realizes she can't plan on, the matters of the heart. Thank you, next by Andy J. Christopher, and this is about a woman who basically is always the fling before the ring, and so she sets out to like find out why that happens and kind of like find love for herself. The last book I have to talk about today is My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. This is about a school teacher who goes on vacation to Cape Cod and she basically gets pulled into this murder mystery with a really hot bounty hunter. Um, 
I love Tessa Bailey. I love anything she writes and I'm so excited for this one. And also the cover, the cover. And okay, I think I'm through most of the romances coming out in like the next six months-ish or like five months and then the past month. Um, I just love rom-coms. I'm so excited to read so many of these. I may have forgotten one or two along the way. Hopefully I captured most of them. And of course there are always indie romances that I'm reading as well that weren't included in this video at all. So please let me know down below which one you are most looking forward to reading. And yeah, just stick along with me on my channel and watch me read all these really fun rom-coms throughout the year because I'm basically obsessed with rom-coms. They give me all the warm and fuzzy feelings and I just love them. So please leave a little heart with like a bandage emoji for like the healing heart powers of rom-coms down below if you've watched this far. And have some fun reads and books and I'll catch you guys in the next one.